Can you help me make a video? Can you help me? Listen, we've been doing videos the same way for a couple of years now. The green screen, you know, the presentation, everything's been kind of the same. And we've really been enjoying it and it's done well for our channel. But I gotta be honest, I'm kind of tired of it. It's time to move on. Today, let's try something a little different. Let me know if you like it. Drone, yes. Microphones, yes. We might need it because it might be windy. Gimbal, no, it's too heavy. Camera I originally started my channel using, no thanks. New camera, yes please. Hi doggies, you're my favorite customer. Sundays are days that I upload videos to YouTube. You're probably watching this on a Sunday. I find myself sitting around obsessing over the numbers about that day's video for hours and it just completely wastes the day. So today, I just got done uploading my video. I'm getting out of here so that I don't do that. Who am I kidding? I'm still gonna check the numbers on my phone. Caledon State Park here in King George, Virginia. This is the first time I've been on this particular trail. I'm kind of excited about it. It's really nice today. It's like 42 degrees or so, so you're not sweating like a hog and all that, which I tend to do, but I'm excited about it. There is supposedly a huge concentration of bald eagles nests in this park. Uh, one of the largest in the country or on the East Coast, or I don't know. But the, the website even said, sometimes you can see them in the winter. That would be cool. So the only problem is we gotta go two miles before we get to that place. So anyway, once we get down there, I'll send the drone up. We'll see what we can see. We all know 2020 has been a crazy year. I don't need to explain why. <laughs> Everybody has been in a completely different world than what they're used to, and most people are locked in their homes and they can't go anywhere, so they're looking for things to do. So this has actually worked out pretty well for the aquarium hobby. Aquariums are a great way to solve that problem of what are you gonna do while you're locked in your house? But there's something that I've been thinking about with this newfound rise in popularity of aquariums, and that is there's certain fish that I don't think get the love that they deserve. So I reached out to my channel members and I said, hey, give me suggestions on fish that you think are underrated. I got some pretty good suggestions. So don't forget to look for bubbles in this video. He's gonna be hiding somewhere. It's gonna be a lot of fun because I have a lot of choices of where I can put him. If you're the first one in this video to comment below the timestamp of where Bubbles shows up, we'll pin you to the top of the comment section. I think we're almost there. Okay, we're a quarter of a mile away. What are we gonna see when we get there? I don't know. There's a fenced in area that's just fencing in some bricks. I don't know. Looks like some Blair Witch stuff. 
I had a really good time flying the drone, but there's a lot of people out here on this trail. And I don't know, it, I still feel weird about recording and people can see me and stuff like that. I don't, I don't know, it's really weird. Plus, you know, there's no bald eagles. I mean, it's winter time, what was I expecting? But you know what? It just gives me more reason to come back in the summer. But let's get back to the house where it's nice and warm. We can talk about these underrated fish. Okay, I feel a lot more comfortable in here because I feel like I don't have people staring at me. I don't know, that still creeps me out. But anyway, let's get on with this list of underrated fish that came from our channel members. The first one was from Liz. I don't know how to say her name on YouTube, but I know her name is Liz because she is a customer to our website, keepfishkeeping.com. She says, maybe Daniels. You're gonna hear me say this about a lot of fish on this list. You're gonna hear me say, I totally agree. Well, naturally, I totally agree. That's why they're on the list, but Daniels are looked at as almost like a, like a second rate fish to a lot of people, a beginner fish, just a throwaway fish. We're gonna describe a couple more fish on this list as throwaway fish too, but they're absolutely not something that should be looked at that way. These are magnificent fish, great for beginners because they're practically bulletproof. In fact, I've done a video about them. If I can figure out what corner to point to, I'll put it up here, but we did a video where I put in the title, a bulletproof fish. These fish are almost indestructible and that makes them great beginner fish. And that makes them look like to some people they are throwaway fish. But in my opinion, that's what makes them great because you can be a mediocre fish keeper like me and keep them successfully and never have them die, which makes you feel like you're a professional. But listen, in all seriousness, these fish are awesome. They're all over the place. That's the, the number one trait with these fish is that they are constantly moving and they're constantly moving fast. They are all over the place. You get a whole big group of them and just let them go wild in your tank. There's never gonna be a dull moment. And the good thing about Danios, there's a Danio for every tank. You could put 50 giant Danios in that tank right there. Let me tell you something. It would be an amazing tank. And if I would thought about that before I did, I might've even considered that. That would have been awesome. Giant Danios get pretty big. They don't get huge like Oscars, but they get several inches long. I think four or five inches is what they max out at, maybe even a little bit bigger. But then you also have them all the way down to like the size of a grain of rice with the CPDs or Celestial Pearl Danios. You've got the zebras, which are a little bit bigger than that. The pearls, which are pearlescent. They've got all these colors. They're beautiful. There's so many different types of Danios. And in my opinion, that along with the fact that they're all over the place, constant activity, practically bulletproof, makes them a great fish. But unfortunately, yeah, they are underrated. Now, if you look closely in this tank behind me, you're gonna see that I agree 100% with my friend, Paul McCarthy. He says, Severums, they are beautiful with a good temperament. They absolutely are. People describe them, and I've done it a hundred times, as the poor man's discus. It's true, discus are expensive, severums are not, and they do share quite a few similarities. There's not as big a variety of severums as there are discus, but they're absolutely stunning fish, and they'll make a great centerpiece in any tank. Maybe you're not a fan of angels, or angels breed too much. You want a fish that's equally as pretty to that? Get some severums, they'll absolutely do it. Maybe you can't afford discus, get you some severums. They may not be to that same level, but they are absolutely gorgeous. My gold severums, which I don't even know where they are, but they're in there. They are fantastic. They grow very fast. They're easy to keep, mild mannered, beautiful, not expensive. You don't need a massive tank for them. I've got them in a 360, but that's just because that's what I did. But you don't have to have them in something that big. 55 gallon tank would be perfectly fine for them. You will absolutely love this. these fish. I absolutely agree with Paul. There should be a ton more Severums out there. Where's the other Severum? I think I saw his tail. I think I saw him. 
There they are. Mites Aquatics and Things says the good old fashioned black mollies has always been one of my favorite fish and they are tanks. What he means by tanks is this is another fish like we talked about with the Danios earlier that is practically bulletproof, which makes them fantastic for beginners and makes them an amazing fish to keep. Plus, they're live bears, which means they're always gonna be popping out babies as long as you have males and females together. And as long as they're popping out babies, it's gonna make you feel like you are a super successful fish keeper. So that's gonna make you happy and you get a bunch of free fish in there. It's, it's a win-win for everybody. I think one of the common things with a lot of the fish that are on this list that are described as underrated are fish that are labeled kind of as beginner fish. If it's a beginner fish, that means it's uh, poo poo that fish. It's not that big of a deal. And I think that's actually a disservice to quite a few of these fish, the Danios, the Severums, the Mollies, and all of the fish that we're gonna talk about on this list. They shouldn't be looked at that way just because they are great beginner fish doesn't mean that somebody like me that's been keeping fish for 20, I don't know how many years, can't enjoy them and, and love them just as much as we do any other fish. I love mollies. I have said it a thousand times and I'll say it a thousand more times. The Dalmatian molly is one of my absolute favorite fish in the entire hobby. Now, Ben Leopold is trying to get some brownie points with me and he says, okay, I gotta believe the most underrated fish is the Oscar. And that is, I, you know what? I don't think I can agree that it is underrated because it's so popular. A lot of these fish on the list are popular, but Oscars are one of the most common fish in the hobby. And there were quite a few people that commented on his comment saying, how can they be underrated when they're one of the most popular fish in the hobby? I think what he meant to say was they're not taken seriously. I think that should be the better way of saying it. People don't look at Oscars as a spectacle. They look at them as a fish. And I say, how dare you look at them that way? Look at these Oscars. I don't know where they are. You can barely see them behind me. They are amazing fish. They have unbelievable personalities. You've heard it a million times. They are a water dog, a water puppy. They're, they're unbelievable. If I was to walk up to that tank right now, they think I'm gonna feed them. So they go absolutely crazy. It, like dogs do when you walk into the house after a long day at work. It's an amazing thing to see. Not all fish do that, a lot of them do. But Oscars do it big time because they're gluttons and they want to eat all the time. But these are not looked at as an advanced fish. It's like anybody can keep an Oscar. Therefore, they're not taken as seriously as other fish should be. Are they underrated? I don't know. I don't think they are because they're so popular. But I understand why Ben put these on the list. And there were others too that put this on the list, but Ben was the first one that I saw, so he got included on the list. But there are a lot of people that said Oscars are under, underrated, and I think it's because they're not taken seriously. I hope that makes sense. This one is interesting, and I never thought I would see this one on the list. Cadence's Aquatics says, rosy red minnows. I love mine, but I don't see a lot of people online who have them. I don't know how underrated they are, but they're amazing. Also, Oscars, yeah, there we go, another one that put on Oscars. Thank you, Cadence, you get a brownie point from me. But yeah, rosy reds, that's an interesting one because I've been doing this a long time, more than half my life, and I've never known anyone to ever have rosy reds as a pet. So therefore, they are probably the most underrated fish on this entire list because I don't know anyone that looks at them as pet fish. I feel like everybody looks at them as feeders. If you don't know by now, I despise the idea of feeder fish. I think they're disgusting, I think it's cruel, and I don't like it at all. <laughs> so I'm of course not gonna support rosy reds as feeders. So if they can't be feeders, what are they gonna be? Well, they would be very similar to a Danio or a White Cloud or, or 
dare I even say things like guppies and stuff like that. Maybe not as beautiful as those other fish, but they're all over the place. They're a dime a dozen. Shoot, you could buy like 20 of them for a dollar. They're nothing easy to keep, very durable, very hardy. So why can't they be great pet fish? I think they absolutely could be. In fact, I might try because I think it's a cool idea. I don't really have any footage of rosy reds except for being a thousand in a PetSmart tank. Uh, that's the only footage I've got, but hey, I like the idea. Maybe I'll try a rosy red tank. We'll see. This is one I agree 100% with, and of course it is because it's an African cichlid, but Furloughs Aquatics says Lake Victorian cichlids, have you seen a tomato hap? I have seen a tomato hap. They are absolutely amazing. And let me tell you a little story about a Victorian cichlid. When we had our shop and we were breeding Africans while also running a fish store, uh, there was a customer that came in and he said, I've got a breeding colony of Pundamilla neroi. That's how I pronounce it. Would you be interested in having them? And I was like, um, I don't know that there's a huge demand for them. Beautiful fish, but uh, you know, I don't know that that'd be something that I'd be wanting to invest in. And he said, no, I'm not looking for you to invest in them. I want to give you this proven breeding colony of neroi. And I was like, well, yes, please. And he brought those in, I don't know, the next weekend or whatever. That group of fish produced a ton of fry for us. Let me tell you something, I could not have been more wrong. Every single African cichlid person that came into our store went, what's that? They were mesmerized by those fish and they should be. They're absolutely gorgeous. We could not get the fish to breed fast enough. We were standing in front of the tank going, come on, come on, let's go, go, make more babies, make more babies. They just wouldn't produce fast enough Every single time we released a new batch for sale, boom, they were gone within just a few days. It was unbelievable. So yeah, Lake Victorian cichlids are absolutely shockingly beautiful and you don't see them all that often. And I don't know why that is. I, there's just not a huge demand for them yet. When you see them, they're sold out. So yeah, obviously they're gorgeous fish. Why you don't hear people talking about them all that, more, all that much, I don't know. I guess it's just because African cichlids are dominated by Malawi and Tanganyikan. Now, if you don't know, if you're watching this going, what's a Victorian cichlid? Well, there's three rift lakes that we see the majority of African cichlids coming from. That would be Malawi, Tanganyika, and Lake Victoria. The most fish in the hobby come from Lake Malawi. That would be where your peacocks, haps, and mbunas come from. And then your shell dwellers and your frontosas and uh, Compressiceps and things like that are gonna come from Tanganyika, very popular, gained in popularity quite a bit over the last few years. And then kind of like the younger stepbrother is Victorian cichlids that you don't hear of all that often. But Furlow is right. They are shockingly beautiful and I don't know why they're not more popular. Eric, maybe you should start breeding them. You could be a millionaire. I'm having so much fun with this. I hope you are too. The next one on the list is from my friend, Nicole. I, I don't know how to pronounce the last name, so I'm not even gonna try. Snails, always working for you. That sounds like that should be the tagline for like a local news broadcast. Always working for you. It's very true. They are always working for you. They're working nonstop, constantly all over the place, helping you keep your tank a little cleaner and helping you to solve those algae problems they're just not doing it very fast. They're doing it at their own pace and it's very cool to watch. If you would have asked me five years ago, what would you think about putting 12, 13 snails in a tank? I'd have said, are you out of your mind? That's horrible. Why would you even want to do that? They're, no, I don't want snails in my tank. That's crazy. I can honestly tell you now, there are snails in every tank in our house that can have snails. Obviously, this one can't have snails. I don't know, there's actually one sitting right on the substrate of Scott's tank right there, big mystery snail. We got snails all over the place in this house and I absolutely love them. It adds just another level 
to the tank. It, it just gives it a little bit more life and a little bit more nature, if you will, even though there's just not a very fast pace to them. They're just gonna move along. You don't see them moving. You look over, there they are. You look back and you look over again and they've moved two inches. They're not the most exciting thing in the world, but they're really cool. They're fun. They help you keep things clean. It's just a shame that a lot of people in the hobby look at them as a nuisance. And this would be why I agree 100%. They're underrated. This is another one that gets a lot of positive points from me. My friend Ray says, definitely the Frontosa. I think they are the kings of any African tank, but they are never mentioned. I love Frontosas too, so I definitely agree with Ray. Yes, this is another one that like seven or eight years ago, they were everywhere. Everywhere you looked, you'd see Frontosas on people's shirts. You'd see that they were everywhere. Frontosas were the king of the African cichlid hobby. Now, not so much. And there's quite a few reasons for that probably. They're an expensive fish. Uh, they're extraordinarily slow growers. You don't get that instant gratification. Uh, they just grow super slow. They don't move very fast. They don't really entertain like these fish do. They just kind of hang out, but they're stunningly beautiful. And they're, dare I say, they're a man's fish. Now, that doesn't mean females can't have frontosas, of course, come on, don't be ridiculous. I'm just saying it looks like a, a burly, lazy man. <laughs> I'm going to get myself in so much trouble, but I hope you understand what I mean. They're, they're just, they're just kind of like, a, uh, I don't know, whatever. I'm going to get you banned by YouTube now, but they are an amazing, amazing fish. And Ray's right. They're not mentioned much anymore. I don't really know why that is. I think it's one of those fish that three, four years from now, we'd be like, who would ever put Frontosas on a list like that? Because they'll be back up on top of the wave as far as popularity goes. That happens with all fish. There's waves, there's ups and downs, and Frontosas are, are on a down right now, but they are magnificent. If you're an African cichlid keeper, you must try Frontosas. I mentioned Kevin Green earlier. I don't know, shame on me if he still has the tank, but check out his channel. It's one of the most unbelievable tanks on YouTube, it's a tank full of Frontosas. It's amazing. I absolutely love that tank. Thought about doing that with this one, if I'm being honest with you. Thought about doing it with my new 240 that's going up right over there. It's awesome. Yeah, I could talk all day long about Frontosas. Now here's the first one that's trying to get points from Lisa, and that is, of course, Lefty3213A. He says, female bettas. Of course I agree. You think I'm gonna let myself get in the amount of trouble I would get in if I did not agree with that? Yes, female bettas are definitely not appreciated as much as the males. We are doing our best, and Lisa is made it her life mission to change that and make female bettas a lot more popular than they are. We've sold, I'm not lying to you here, folks, and I'm not doing an advertisement. We've sold as many female bettas on our website as we have males. I never would have imagined that that would have been true, but it absolutely is. When we first started talking about selling bettas on our website, Lisa said, I want to popularize females. I really want to specialize in that. And I was like, mm, okay, we'll do whatever you want, honey, but uh, whew, I don't know about that. And boy, boy, was I wrong. <laughs> they sell as fast as we can put them up on the site. And it's not because we're talking about them. It's because they're beautiful fish. Uh, so yeah, absolutely, 100%. I really hope, like I talked about with Frontosas, a year from now, we'll look back and think that's ridiculous that we had female bettas on that. And I hope that Lisa and I have something to do with that, but mostly her. And the last fish on this list is gonna come from quite possibly the most unique account name on YouTube, and that is 
deep fried apple pie in my eye says feeder guppies. I've seen quite a few amazing patterns and colors in feeder guppy tanks. Let me tell you a little story about feeder guppies. When we had our shop, we used to sell minnows for bait. People kept coming in asking for it. Hey, you're a fish store. You should sell bait fish. We weren't really into it, but we're like, well, okay, at least they're not feeder fish, even though I guess they kind of are. But anyway, we did it just to basically serve the fishermen in the community because otherwise they would have had to drive forever to get these. So we got them, we had them, uh, but they were seasonal. So we didn't have them all the time. And we would have these two 55 gallon tanks running in the back of our store that when it wasn't fishing time, uh, we would have nothing in there. And so a lady came in and said, I have these guppies that have just been breeding nonstop. I've got so many of them, I don't know what to do. If I scoop out a huge net full of them and bring them in here and just give them to you, will you just sell them as feeders? And I said, I will do no such thing. I'll sell them to people as pets. And she was like, well, they're not all that pretty. I don't think you're gonna be able to get any money for them. I said, I'm not gonna look for top dollar, but I promise you I'll sell them. And so anyway, that's what happened. She did that. We gave her a little bit of store credit because we're like, hey, we're going to make money off this. We'll, we'll give you a little something. And we sold every single one of those and we sold them at a price. I don't know. I think we sold them like 75 cents a piece or something. It wasn't outrageous, but it was enough to where people wouldn't even consider using them as feeders. A little fish that big for 75 cents. I mean, it wouldn't be worth it. So nobody was buying them as feeders. They were buying them as pets and we sold every single one of them and she kept bringing them in kept bringing them in and it became something that we had all the time in there and deep fried apple pie in my eye is absolutely right there are some amazing fish in there sure they might not be those elite level fluffy guppies that people pay a hundred dollars a pair for but they were nice looking fish and easy to keep fish plenty of activity small you don't need a huge tank all of the best things about guppies they had them too and it's just awesome so yeah mr apple pie in my eye i agree don't feed feeder guppies that's just ugh. so there you go this was a lot of fun i hope the video isn't 45 minutes long i've been just kind of riffing for a while now but when i get into this i get into it and i have a whole lot of fun with it i hope you enjoyed it too did you find this guy Hopefully that didn't make too much noise in the microphone. Did you find him in the video somewhere? I think I did a pretty good job hiding him. He's dancing a little bit, but he's in there. Uh, it's kind of hard to do what I did, but if you found him, put it down in the comment section. Make sure you're the first one to do it. And if you are, we'll pin you to the top of that. And you can always look at it and say, yay, look, I won. Even though you didn't really win anything, you just get to see your name at the top. But who knows, it's a lot of fun. I tried real hard to hide him in a good spot. If you didn't see him, watch the video again. Start it from the beginning. I'm just giving you a hint and you'll find him somewhere and then let us know in the comments. Are you enjoying that? I think it's a lot of fun. I want to keep doing it as long as people keep enjoying it. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to talking to you again next week. I wish I could tell you what we're going to talk about, but I don't know what it's going to be, but we'll talk next week.